Jagantar or Yugantar Bengali, Yugantara Jagantar English meaning new era or more literally transition of an epoch was one of the two main secret revolutionary trends operating in Bengal for Indian independence. This association, like Anushilan Samiti started in the guise of suburban fitness club. Several Jagantar members were arrested, hanged, or deported for life to the cellular jail in Andaman. Thanks to the amnesty after World War I, most of them were released and could give a new turn to their political career, mainly, a by joining Deshbandu Swarajya or b the Communist Party of India, or c M. N. Roy's Radical Democratic Party, or d later Subhas Chandra Bose's forward bloc in the 1930s. Notable members Surya Sen Masterda Aurobindo Ghosh (1872–1950), Baron Ghosh, Sandi Ghosh (1916–1989), Mohit Moitra, Bhaga Jatin alias Jatindra Nath Mukherjee (1879–1915), Satendra Chandra Mitra (1888–1942), Raja Subod Malik, Kudaram Bose. Prafula Chaki Pritalada Wadadar (1911–1932), Kanailal Dutta (1888–1908), Satendranath Bose (1982–1908), Santosh Kumar Mitra (1901–1931), Dinesh Chandra Majumdar (1907–1934), Ganesh Ghosh (B. 1900). Jadugopal Mukherjee 1866 to 1986 Roshamoy Majumdar D.1996 Manaranhan Gupta B 1890 Abhinash Chandra Bhattacharya 1882 to 1962 Amarendra Chatterjee 1880 to 1957 Ambika Chakrabarti 1891 to 1962 Arun Chandra Guha B 1892 Basanta Kumar Biswas 1895 to 1915 Bipin Bihari Gangali 1887 to 1954 Bupendra Kumar Datta 1894 to 1979 Jaiban Lal Chattopadhyay 1889 to 1970 Jyotish Chandra Ghose 1887 to 1970 Taraknath Das 1884 to 1958 Tarakeshwar Dastadar Purna Chandra Das (1889–1956), Surendra Mohan Ghosh alias Madhu Ghosh (1893–1976), Apendra Nath Bandopadi (1879–1950), Ulaskar Dutta, Vanabusan Bakshi, Dababrata Bose, later Swami Parijiananda. The beginning This party was established by leaders like Aurobindo Ghosh, his brother Baron Ghosh, Bupendranath Datta, Raja Subod Malik in April 1906. Baron Ghosh and Bhaga Jatin were the main leaders. Along with 21 revolutionaries, they started to collect arms, explosives and manufactured bombs. The headquarters of Jagantar was located at 27 Kanai Dar Lane, then 41 Champatola First Lane, Kolkata. <laughs> Activities Some senior members of the group were sent abroad for political and military training. One of the first batches included Surendra Mohan Bose, Tarak Nath Das and Gurindit Kumar, who, since 1907, were extremely active among the Hindu and Sikh immigrants on the western coast of North America. These units were to compose the future Ghadar Party. In Paris Hemchandra Kanungo alias Hem Das, along with Pandurang M. Bapat, obtained training in explosives from the Russian anarchist Nicholas Safransky. Source, Kerr, p. 397. After returning to Kolkata, he joined the combined school of self-culture and bomb factory run by Baron Ghosh at a garden house in Maniktala, a suburb of Calcutta. However, the attempted murder of Kingsford, the then district judge of Muzaffarpur by Kudaram Bose and Prafula Chaki the 30th of April 1908, initiated a police investigation that led to the arrest of many of the revolutionaries. 
The prisoners were tried in the famous Alipore bomb conspiracy case in which several activists were deported for life to the cellular jail in Andaman. In 1908, as a next step, Gigantar chose to censure persons connected with the arrest and trial of revolutionaries involved in the Alipore bomb case. On 10 February 1909, Ashutosh Biswas, who conducted the prosecution of Kanai and Satyan for the murder of Narain Gosain, a revolutionary turned approver, was shot dead by Charu Basu in the Calcutta High Court premises. Samsal Alam, deputy superintendent of police, who conducted the Alipur case was shot and killed by Biran Dutta Gupta on the stairs of Calcutta High Court building on 24 January 1910. Charu Basu and Biran Dutta Gupta were later hanged. Several, including Jatindra Nath Mukherjee, were arrested in connection with the murder of police inspector Samsal Alam on 24 January 1910 in Calcutta and other charges. Thus started the Howrah Sibpur conspiracy case that tried the prisoners for treason, waging war against the Crown and tampering with the loyalty of Indian soldiers, such as those belonging to the Jat Regiment posted in Fort William, and soldiers in Upper Indian cantonments. The German plot Nixon's report corroborates that Gigantar under Jatindra Nath Mukherjee counted a good deal on the ensuing World War to organize an armed uprising with the Indian soldiers in various regiments. During World War I the Gigantar party arranged importation of German arms and ammunitions notably the 32 bore German automatic pistols via Varendranath Chattopadhyay alias Chato and other revolutionaries residing in Germany. They had contacted Indian revolutionaries active in the United States, as well as Gigantar leaders in Kolkata. Jatindra Nath Mukherjee informed Rash Bihari Bose to take charge of Upper India, aiming at an all-Indian insurrection with the collaboration of native soldiers in different cantonments. History refers to it as the German plot. To raise fund, the Gigantar party organized a series of dacoities which came to be known as taxicab dacoities and boat dacoities, in order to procure funds to prepare the ground for working out the Indo-German conspiracy. The first of the taxicab dacoities took place at Garden Reach, Kolkata on 12 February 1915, by a group of armed revolutionaries under the leadership of Narendra Bhattacharya under the direct supervision of Jatindranath Mukherjee. Similar dacoities were organized on different occasions and in various parts of Calcutta. Dacoities were accompanied by political murders in which the victims were mostly zealous police officers investigating into the cases, or approvers who helped the police. Topic failure of the German plot on receiving instructions from Berlin, Jatindra Nath Mukherjee selected Narain Bhattacharya alias M. N. Roy and Fanny Chakravarti alias Pine to meet the German legation at Batavia. The Berlin Committee had decided that the German arms were to be delivered at two or three places like Haysha on Chittagong coast, Raimangal in the Sundarbans and Balasore in Orissa. The plan was to organize a guerrilla force to start an uprising in the country, backed by a mutiny among the Indian armed force. The whole plot leaked out locally owing to a native traitor and, internationally, through the Czech revolutionaries who were in touch with their counterparts in the United States, and as soon as the information reached the British authorities, they alerted the police, particularly in the Delta region of the Ganges, and sealed all the sea approaches on the eastern coast from Nokali Chittagong side to Orissa. Shramajibi Samabaya and Harry and Sons of Calcutta, the two business concerns run respectively by Amarendra Chatterjee and Harakumar Chakrabarti which were taking active part in the Indo-German conspiracy were searched. Police came to know that Baga Jatin was in Balasore waiting for a German arms delivery. Police went on to find out the hiding places of Baga Jatin and associates and after a gun fight the revolutionaries were either killed or arrested. The German plot thus failed. After the First World War The revolutionaries suffered grievous blows with the death or arrest of some of their important leaders. In effect, they had been divided into two groups with distinct convictions. The Dhaka Anushilan Samiti in eastern Bengal did not participate in the Indo-German plan that the Gigantar in western Bengal promoted. In 1920, leaders of the Gigantar party suspended all violent action, having accepted to follow the non-cooperation movement proposed by Gandhi, compatible with their revolutionary hope to organize a mass movement. The Dhaka Anushilan maintained its terrorist program by raiding post offices, railway cash offices, etc., to build up funds. <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> Unification and failure. Following these major setbacks, and in the new circumstances of the colonial powers practicing their divide and rule policy, there was an attempt to unify the revolutionary factions in Bengal. Anushilan Samiti and Jagantar were brought close by the joint leadership of Narendra Mohan Sen of Anushilan, represented by Rabindra Mohan Sen and Jadugopal Mukherjee of Jagantar, represented by Bhupendra Kumar Datta. However, this merger failed to revive the revolutionary activities up to the expected level. Neo-violence The younger generation of the revolutionaries were frustrated by the failure of the attempted merger. This led to the formation of a new confederation in 1929, called the Neo-Violence Party. <laughs> Later activities In 1930, as an antidote promised to Gandhi's policy, Jagantar Group prepared programs for further violent revolutionary acts of opposing British occupation. The plans included murder of Europeans, burning of the Dum Dum Aerodrome, destroying the electricity, gas and petrol supplies of Kolkata, disorganization of tram services in Kolkata by cutting overhead wires, damaging the communication system by destroying telegraph lines, railway tracks etc. The outcome of such programs culminated in several attacks. The Chittagong Armory raid by Surya Sen and his followers deserves special mention in this regard. The scenario changed with the years. The British were planning to quit India, while communal and religious politics came into play. The basic political background on which revolutionary ideas were founded seemed to evolve towards a new direction. The revolutionaries can thus be said to have come to an end by 1936. The Gigantar officially merged with the Congress on 9 September 1938. 